Today I want to talk about a different uh, setting. Today I want you to think about the fishermen have gone back to Galilee and they are there and now they're out on the water. I love to fish. I can just see them out there and they're on that water and they're fishing and they've been casting their nets and they have not caught anything. You know, a couple weeks ago, I went fishing with my son, uh, Dalton, and as we were fishing, neither one of us caught anything the whole day. And you know, when you when you throw out a hundred times or, or 200 times and you're not catching anything, you start changing stuff up and it gets very hard on you. Well, the, the disciples are coming back in and they have been fishing and they see Jesus. They see Jesus. And Jesus asked them a question. I, I, I kind of think it's, it's, it's kind of it's funny as, as they're headed towards the beach. Jesus asked them, he tells them, really, you have not caught any fish. And then he tells them to cast their nets on the right side of the boat. And when they cast their nets, they catch a great number of big fish. You know, I love that. Big fish. It wasn't small fish. It was big fish. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you know, those monster fish. Well, it was enough. It was 153 fish. And they knew that the Lord had done touched them. Now, they have fished all night, not caught anything. This man hollers out and he tells them to cast their nets on the right side. And they realize that it's the Lord Jesus who is telling them to do this. When Peter finds out that it's the Lord, he goes and he puts his, his things back on because he was, he was dressed for work. I'm thinking he's kind of like us. When it's hot outside, he may take off his shirt and he's out there fishing in his shorts and he's in the boat out there but now he knows that he's going back to Jesus and he's got to get ready to go back to Jesus and so he puts back on his clothes he heads out to get to Jesus now when Jesus he gets to Jesus he said it says that there was so many fish that they had to gather and pull the nets to the bank but when they get there, Jesus, I just want you to picture this. I love, I love, because I'm an outdoorsman, I guess. So I love this picture. Jesus has already got the fire built. And he's already got some fish that's up on this fire. And he's getting ready to feed them breakfast. But he, he, he's wanting some of their fish. Bring me some of those fish. Now he is getting ready for them to sit down and they feed them breakfast and they cook these fish can you imagine if you had been through everything that has happened so far and now you're back at your old things that you do that you normally do you know I think oh Peter he's probably a lot like myself he likes getting out on the water he likes being out there he's comfortable doing that he knows how to fish he knows how to do these things and now he's encountered Jesus in a whole different way but what I want to teach you today and what I want us to see is I want us to look at John chapter 21 and I want us to look at verses 15 through 19. And I really, what I hope to show you today is I hope to, to, to be able to show you, I want to talk about Simon's conversation with Jesus. But more than that, I want to talk about mine and your service. When I say service, it's what we do for Christ and how we serve. And I want to show you in a different way, maybe, this scripture than you've ever looked before. So um, you can stay seated. I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to take the word here and I really want to break this down for you. So let's read verses 15 through 17 to start with. And here's what it says. John chapter 21 verses 15 through 17. So when, when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, tend to my lamb. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. 
He said to him, Shepherd my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, tend to my sheep. Tend to my sheep. Here's what I want to I want to point out today. Jesus has just went and he sat down and he's had breakfast with them. Now he's got some important things. He right now what what Jesus is doing is Jesus is bringing Peter back and he's restoring him for the ministry. But it's not only for the disciples, I mean not only for Peter, but he's also talking to where the disciples can be heard. Do you know that he, he could have at the breakfast table, he could have sat down and he could have had the conversation with him around that table, but it was not the right time. What he did is they fellowship together. They enjoyed their time together. The word doesn't say really what happened there except that he had them breakfast and they ate together. You know, I love in the morning time sometimes when we're going, me and the boys, whether we're hunting or fishing, we go and we sit down and we sit around the table and we eat for our meal that we like to eat before a big hunting trip for y'all deer hunters we don't do this anymore because we know the smell messes us up but for fishing and stuff we like to go and we like to get a big omelet from waffle house and we like the big hash browns that goes with it boy me and dustin and dalton we can tear some hash browns and 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 omelets up. We know when we go in, I can tell you right now that Dustin's going to get a ham and cheese omelet and I'm going to order a ham and cheese omelet with hash browns and Dalton's going to do the same and we're going to ask for ketchup to come with it and we smother that baby with ketchup. You know when we sit down and we talk, we don't talk about things that's bothering us. You know what? We enjoy the time of fellowship together and we sit down and we love that time that we talk and be able to, to break bread together and just to be able to share those times. That's special to me because them are my boys and I get to sit down. You know, I'm not going to bring up negative stuff and talk about negative stuff during that time. I think about Jesus and this is what Jesus did. Jesus comes to the place and he's not bringing up these things. But now breakfast is over and he starts asking Peter, do you love me? Three times he asked him, do you love me? Do you know why he asked him three times? Because three times Jesus, I mean Peter, denied Jesus. Can you imagine what was going through Peter's mind as Jesus was asking in him, when he asked him, do you love me? You know that it had to come across his mind as he, of what he did when he denied Jesus. It had to be. Listen, I think that he shows us this in the Word of God because a lot of times, me and you, we get to a place that we fail him. And when we fail him, we think that we no longer can be used. But Peter, he was getting him ready for service. Three times he asked Peter, Do you love me? Do you love me? We see in verse, in verse 15, he says, Jesus said to Simon, Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And then in verse 17, we, say, we see where he says, he said to him the third time, the 16, 16, he says, and he said to them the second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Who is listening? Who is listening? Those disciples who had seen him deny Jesus that said he did not know him. Now they're hearing him in front of the Father as the Father asked him, Do you love me? And he says, Yes. Here's what I want to tell you today. 
See, I believe that with all my heart, in order for us to serve God the way that we are to serve Him, we have to love Him first more than anything else in this world. See, if we love Him, when you love someone, you will serve in a way that you have never served before. Jesus was preparing Peter for what He was going to do. He tells him, He says, he says, do you love me? He didn't say, do you love the work that I do? Do you love the church? Do you love this? Do you love that? Do you love me? Can I ask you a question today? What would happen at Greenbrier if we served God out of love for God? And not out of obligation for the pastor asked me or it's the right thing to do or our denomination does this. Tonight, let me just use tonight for an example. What about tonight? Tonight, as we get to come and worship tonight, what if you walk in this room tonight and the only reason you are here is to worship the true God because of your love that you have for the Savior? Can you imagine what would happen to us tonight? See, that worship would be totally different. Your service, when I go to set up tables and, and these men that help me set up tables over in the gym, when we go to set those tables up, it's not that we're having to set tables up again or pull chairs out at the end of the thing to put them back up. No, we're serving God. We're serving Jesus. We do it out of the love for the Father, not out of love for Greenbrier Road Baptist Church. Now, sure, we love the church and we want it to grow, but here's what I'm telling you right now. You can love me all you want to, but if we don't love Jesus, the first, the first, I believe, qualification in serving God is to love him with all of our heart. Why do you think people burn out? It's because we're serving out of, out of fleshly desires, not out of God's desire. That's why people can give it up and say, no, I don't want to do it no more. I've got, I've got to step aside for a while. You can step aside because what's happened is you've lost that first love. I think I can back this up completely in the Word of God and show you how this, this really speaks. But listen to this. Matthew 22, verses 37. Here's what he says. And he said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. It's just to love. See, a lot of times as Christians, we look at it and we think that is so easy. We think that it's so easy. We, we look at that we are qualified for service. But if we are not loving Christ, it don't matter how qualified it is, we will be lacking quality and quantity. The way that you do things here at the church, you will be lacking those things in power because of doing it out of the fleshly desire, not out of love for Jesus. We know much and do much and we give much. And yet, we still can be dead to God. There is no life where there is no love for the Father. Now, let me, let me clean this up and tell you what I mean by this. We can do a lot of great things. We can do a lot of great things. But without love for the Father, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Look at Revelations. Let's just, let's just turn real quickly. Um, we're probably not going to get through with this. I'm probably going to have to pick this back up. But Revelation chapter 2, here's what he says in verse 2. I know your deeds and your toils and perseverance and that you cannot tolerate evil men and you, and you put to the test those who call themselves apostles and they are not. And you found, you found them to be false. Verse 3, And you have perseverance and have endurance for my name's sake, and have not grown weary. But I have this against you, 
that you have left your first love. What is that first love? That first love was love for the Father. See, this statement that we read over so many times and we look at this little statement, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? The reason that he keeps asking these questions is because it's just as he said right here, we can do a lot of things, but if we don't love the Father, we are against him. The scripture makes it very clear. It makes it very clear here. I know your deeds. He knew that they had, they had went against those false teachers. He knew that they had stood for the things that were right. He knew that they had went through where they had grown weary. They kept leaning on him. But the one thing that they did not do, but I have this against you. This is Jesus speaking here. I have this against you. Here's what he said. That you have left your first love. The love for the Father. You know, today I think there's a lot of people sitting here. I think there's a lot of people that come into this church and they come to worship and they come to serve. And I believe that you love Jesus with all your heart. But I believe that some of us think that serving is going to get us the things that we need to have. Here's what I want you to know. Your service will never be effective until we fall in love with Jesus. See, it's hard because I know that we have people that got up early today to come into worship. I know that we have people today that came to Sunday school and they're doing the things. But I also know this. I know that sitting in this room today, sitting in this room today, people are wondering why. Why is my service for God? Why am I not being used by God and you have left your first love? See, P Peter had left his first love and now Jesus was correcting him and he was showing him by asking him, do you love me? It is the love for Christ, not in anything else. It was the greatest commandment. He shows us this in Revelation in 2 Corinthians 5, 14. He says, for the love of Christ controls us. Let me ask you this today. Does the love of Christ control what you're doing? If so, if the love of Christ was controlling us, what would it really feel like? What would it be? Will we still have our shout? Would there be joy even in the midst of trials? Would there, would, there, would there be when you step in that Sunday school class and you're teaching that Word of God, you realize, hey, I'm teaching these people life and not death, that I'm going to teach it like I really believe what I believe in because I'm in love with the Father. Is it, is it where when I get out to cut the grass, it's not that I've got to cut for two hours this grass, but I'm out here because I'm getting to serve and I want my church to look good because we're worshiping the Father up above and He needs the best and so I'm going to give Him the best. I want it to look the best when He comes on my property. You know, with my tithes and with my offerings, when I go to give, I give out of the heart of knowing what Jesus has done for me and out of the love of what he has done for me. I give back so that ministry would be done. Because it's not our possessions, it's his possessions. It's all his anyway. You know, today when we've seen those ladies go into the baptistry to be baptized, you know, what if we, we, and I'm not saying we're not there, but what if we seen it as these women are dying to their selves and they're, they're living for Christ now and they're becoming a new believer? Wouldn't it make us more, a little more excited about who we serve? Wouldn't it give us a little more life instead of, instead of uh, being down and, you know, well, it, 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 did the pastor, was the pastor really on? on today or was he not on who cares here's what he doing he's sharing the love of Jesus I don't have to have the power
pastor. I can look at the Word, and the Word speaks to me life. Now, it is my job, and I'm going I'm to show you right here how it is my job to do that. But let me tell you something. I will never be effective in this church unless I'm in love with Jesus more than I'm in love with my job or with my ministry or with this church or with Calhoun County or anywhere. It will be, I will want to go anywhere and share the good news when I am in love with Jesus. And you know what? I can celebrate across denominations. I can celebrate across countries. I can celebrate in different areas that we go into. In our cities, we don't break down those areas. Why? Because I'm in love with Jesus and I realize that Jesus loves everyone. And when we serve that way, it changes the way that we look at life. It changes the way that we serve God when we come into this church. It changes everything. Look here. So, man. All right, so... I've got to tell you this quick story, and some people know this story, and so I'm not going to use names, but I want to tell you the story. There was a time, there was a gentleman that we knew, and, and we still know him. There was a gentleman who served God with all his heart. Got caught up into some things. Got caught up in some things. And I watched God take and restore this man. I watched God take this man from one place and, and start building and doing different things in this man's life. I want you to think about Peter. Here's what happens a lot of times when people mess up. If we had a person who was denying Christ that said, no, I don't know him. No, we're not serving him. No, we're not doing this. We would, we would turn away from him and try to shy away from that things that he is doing. Because that sin, we don't want to tear us down in the church. But let me show you the picture that Jesus was painting here. Jesus goes to Peter. And I, I, I want you to see, first of all, that, that Jesus brings him publicly. He didn't go to the side and tell Peter, come over here. The Bible doesn't say that. As far as we know, they're still sitting around the campfire. And they're still talking about the things that's going on that Peter had done. Jesus says it in front of all of his disciples. Peter, do you love me? Then feed my sheep. Tend to my sheep. Do you love me more than these? And you know what? Just like the deacon sitting in here, if someone was talking, they're hearing the things that Jesus is saying. They're hearing these things. Do you love me? And I say, yes, Lord. I love you. Feed my sheep. Jeff, I want you to think about it. How would you feel if you knew that I had denied Christ three times and now Jesus is telling me, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Would you believe Jesus? Would you believe that's what I should do? Yes, he believes that. I guarantee you he believes that. Here's what I want to ask you. Three times he asked him and in the public he was asking him about his sin. He said, do you, do you, do you love me? Why? Because they've heard him deny him. They've heard him deny him and the disciples had heard the things that he had done. Now Jesus asked him, do you love me? Then feed my sheep. See, there was a time of repentance in this time that they come together. There was a time that they recognized the sin and they recognized the things, but Jesus had to restore him. He had to bring him to a place to where people could see the true restoration for service. Christ's conversation with Peter was to restore back him into service. It was for, for the people that were sitting around so that they could hear the thing so that Peter, because Peter was going to be used in a great way. And so now Jesus is telling Peter, he says, go and feed my sheep. See, and recognizing him, what it did is it empowered him to go back and to do service. 
I want you to think about that. Because here's what happens to a lot of us. A lot of us have done things that, that sometimes is wrong. And when we get to that place that we do things and we feel like that we no longer can be used. Let me tell you today, if you love Jesus, he wants to use you for service. He wants you to do the things that he, he says. But first we have to come to that place that we love him with all our hearts. And until we get to that place, he can't, he can't use us to do the things. The reason that he recognized, he had to recognize, he had recognition for Peter so that the other disciples could go back and they could testify. Jesus said to him to feed my sheep, to tend to my sheep. Very quickly, very quickly, I want, I want to give you... I want to give you three things as he was commissioned in him that he said to do. And I want to make this, I, I promise I will make this very quick. The Greek word, if you look in the new, in the new, and if you look in the King James Version, it says, the King James says to feed my sheep all three times. Those three things, when he says to feed my sheep, does not mean to spiritually speak out the things of feeding. If you look into the Greek language, there in, in verses 15 and 17, that means to feed them with the spiritual word of God, to feed them. But in verse 16, here's what it means in verse 16. In verse 16, that feeding is a little bit different. It means to direct, to lead my sheep. Here's what Jesus was telling the disciples. He was telling them first to feed my sheep. It was, it was it's important that the, that the sheep are fed and led and that the food are, are being brought to them. It's important that I nourish. If I, I, when we come together in, in, in these services, it's important that we bring the Word of God so that you learn and you grow spiritually and you come to the place that you grow more closer to God. He told them, he said first, to feed my sheep, to nourish the sheep. Second of all, he told them he was direct his sheep. This is where we get the word shepherding from. The word shepherding. It means to give direction to the sheep. The direction that we're going. The direction that we have. He was telling Peter, Peter, you're going to go and you're going to be among these people. Here's what you are to do. You are to feed them. You are to give them the word of God. You are to do these things. Now I'm telling you to go and direct the sheep. Take him. Do the things. And then he tells them who he's going to go to is to the multitude. To feed them. Here's what he said. To lamb and to sheep. To lamb and to sheep. We see in verse 15 he talks about the lamb. Here's what I mean by that. The lamb is those that are new believers, young people in Christ, the young believers, babes in Christ, who we have to mentor, that we have to lead to the place. He says to feed the lamb, the lambs, and to feed the sheep. Who's the sheep? The sheep are the more mature believers. Today we can look at this message and what he's telling Peter to do. He tells him to go to the multitudes. When I mean the multitudes, here's what it means. is As I go out, there's going to be sheep. There's going to be lambs. And we have to mentor these people to bring them to a place that they see Christ. Today I was excited in, in our Sunday school class we heard we heard as, as, as Tim was sharing with us today in the class he said that there comes a time and he wished as a young person as he became a new believer that someone would have taught him what it looked like to be a believer in Christ. What it means to be a true disciple of Christ. That it may have changed some of the things that happens. Here's what that is. That is all of our responsibilities is to feed the sheep to, 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 to take the lamb and to grow that lamb to be stronger. I'm the pastor and by all means it's my job to, to feed the sheep and to pastor and to do the things and lead in directions. I'm not trying to get out of any of that at all. But the Great Commission says to go and make disciples. That's a command for everyone sitting in this room. In order to take a sheep, I mean a lamb, and to grow that lamb, you take that lamb and you walk with that lamb. You, you feed that lamb. You make sure that that lamb is safe, stays safe and that he stays in good pastures. 
And that lamb will grow to become a mature sheep. See, Greenbrier, here's the most important thing. In order for us to grow, in order for us to do the things that God's calling us to do, because we're not no ordinary church. Let me just, let me just say this uh, right off the get-go. Most churches would be happy with coming in and being able to have good worship, have good teaching, and then go home. But see, the DNA of our church is starting to overflow where, where we're looking at it as Jesus looked at Peter. Go feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Here's what it means. He told Peter how he was going to die. He told Peter how he was going to die. He let Peter know that it was going to be a cost to it as he went out. Here's what I want to tell you, Greenbrier. Our job is not to fill this church. Oh, I, 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 would love, I would love for us to be people up in the top and the people to be down here. Our jobs are to make disciples. And as we make disciples, we send those disciples out. See, what Jesus was doing was Jesus was saying, Hey, Keith, just like old Peter, it could have been Keith. Keith, I know that you're, you, you've messed up. Do you love me? Do you really love me? He would be like Dustin if Dustin was, was, was at, still at the house and I told Dustin to do something and he disobeyed me and I said, hey Dustin, do you love me? Yes. Then follow. Follow. Do you know the last statements that Jesus made to him as we end this scripture is he tells him, he tells him to follow, follow him. He said, follow me. I want, you to, I want you to look very quickly. And here's what he says in verse 18. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to gird yourself and walk wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will gird you. Talking about his death. And bring you where you do not wish to go. Now this he said, said, signifying by what kind of death he would be glorifying God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Then again, right at the end, he tells him one more time. He says, follow me. Here's what, here's what I want to ask you today. You know, in order to be truly following Jesus, we must be submissive. We must be willing to follow, not to lead. You ever thought about that? To follow is to give way that another is leading. Following is not leading. Jesus said, and I believe if he was standing here today, every time he called someone out, he said, follow me. Follow me. Remember the disciples? Remember as he was calling them out? Come, follow me. And they left what they were doing and followed him. We must be willing to follow. We must be willing to follow. You will never serve well if you have not learned to be submissive and to follow the will of Christ. You know, I wished I had that wrote down. I wished I would have put that on the board. I'm going to say that one, one more time. You will never serve well if you not learn to be submissive to the will of Christ. Second of all, we got to be steadfast. In order to follow, it's not a one-time task and it's over. See, a lot of times what we like to do as a church is we like to be that one-time task and then, hey, I completed this. I helped in doing this and we've done this. No service. If you're going to follow Jesus, you've got to be steadfast. It's not a one-time and done. It's, it's moving on and doing it over and over and over again. Whatever he has called you to do in order to follow, we have to be steadfast. And then the last part is it's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take sacrifice. Here's what I mean by that. It means that I've got to give away my pride, 
my will, my thinkings, the things that I want to do, and I've got to trust this right here. See, God speaks to Kim, God speaks to me, God speaks to John, He speaks to Diane. And He gives us different tasks and different things to do in the body of Christ. He tells us things to do. And as He speaks, it's going to call sacrifice. It's going to call you for your time. It's going to call for your resources. It's going to call for us to step out in faith. But here's what the truth is. We'll never follow until you're willing to give all that up and to love Christ. Today, here's what I want to ask you. Where do you stand with the Father? Where do you stand? You know, we look at old Peter and we think about Peter and we think about the things that Peter went through. But today, Peter's just like me and you. Feed my sheep. If you love me, feed my sheep. Let's all stand. Today, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and maybe today you realize that the part of salvation that you don't understand is you've not come to the place that you made Him Lord and you followed Him. Today can be the day of salvation to where you surrender your life completely to the Father. Won't you be bold enough to step out and say, Yes, I've made Jesus Lord of my life, and I want to follow Him. Today you may be looking for a church home. We would love to have you come be a part of Greenbrier Road. It's one requirement to love Christ with all your heart. Surrender your life unto Him. Dear Jesus, I pray that you just be with us right now. Lord, I thank you for this time of invitation. Lord, I pray that everything that I've said and everything that is done has been done according to your will. Father, I pray that you would just move in and out of these aisles. And Father, if there's someone who needs to make you Lord of their life, I pray that today will be the day of salvation. In Jesus' name.